Hello, everyone, and welcome back to 360 Comics. Joe here, and I've got a little story for you today. I was about to give up on this LCS's back issue bins. I had been digging for a while, and I finally got to a section where I struck some gold. You know the drill already. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, give us a thumbs up for the like, and leave a comment down below. And don't forget, we're doing our 1,000 subscriber giveaway here on YouTube. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel and like and comment on our videos. Every video you like and comment on from October to December will give you an entry to win this awesome 9.2 White Pages CG Seed copy of The Amazing Spider-Man 3. 17 the fourth appearance of venom awesome todd mcfarland cover don't miss out on this if you haven't subscribed yet now is your chance so the day before thanksgiving i made plans to meet up with a guy who was from maryland he was looking to sell a comic collection i met him over facebook and he wanted to meet in the middle, and I was perfectly okay with that. Um, so we picked Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, from where I am in Philadelphia, it was about an hour. It was about an hour and a half from him in Maryland. So it was a great meeting spot in the middle. I pulled the trigger. I drove out there, and there's a video to come about that collection because I found some really cool stuff, little hidden gems. But uh, that video is not out yet, but it will be in the description below once it is out. A link for that video. But while I was in the area, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, I had never gone to LCSs in that area, local comic shops, so I wanted to check them out. Um, and one of the stores I checked out, I started going through the back issue bins. That's kind of my ritual when I first get to a new store. Um, you know, the wall books, usually all the good deals are gone from the wall books. They're up there for everyone to see. But you can really comb through the back issue bins at a lot of stores and find some amazing deals hidden amongst all the the dollar bin books and things like that and filler issues and uh, i always try to go for that and um i always start at the end of the alphabet too reason being i'm a huge x-men fan i like to get to that first um or at least soon after i start so i always start at z and work my way back whereas most people i think probably start at a um you know if you have a ritual let me know in the comments below but it took from Z all the way till N, which is like half the alphabet almost, um, to find a book that I thought was a good value. Almost all their stuff was th marked at three to five dollars. Uh, most of the books at three fifty or four fifty, but unfortunately, all the keys were pretty much picked. There wasn't a single X Men book in there. What else is later in the alphabet? There were um, nothing. I'm trying to think, uh, not a lot of Spider-Man that was, you know, worth really anything, pretty much all picked, like I said, until I got to this Nightwing book. Now, this is Nightwing number 93, and it was marked at $3, which is a good deal on this book. Usually it sells for between 10 and 15 because in this issue, uh, it's a little bit, uh, controversial. We got, uh, X-Wing, X-Wing, I don't know why I said that, Nightwing, um, being sexually assaulted by Tarantula. And for that reason, this is a pretty sought-after key book. It's got a uh, really awesome cover showing the aftermath of the situation and how it's affecting him. And it, you know, dives into a topic that is unfortunately very, very real. And, uh, you know, a lot of readers will, um, you know, gravitate to books like this. So, um, you know, for $3, this was a, definitely an easy pickup. I'm a big Nightwing fan. But like I said, I had not found anything of value um, up until this point. So I kept digging and I was about to give up. And then I did find this book. Um, this is Gamora number one. I believe this is her first solo book. Um, I don't remember. There's probably solo stories before this, but I think this is her first solo title, if I remember correctly, from like the mid 2010s, maybe like five or six years ago. This book has been on the hot list recently. Why? Well, we found out that in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Gamora and Nebula will probably be more main characters, um, kind of a focus on them. So uh, this issue, as well as Nebula's first solo issue, uh, went up in value. Now, particularly what I think about this book, um, I think it's a good get especially because Gamora's first appearance is very expensive and people often will gravitate to these books, first solo appearances, first solo title. Um, if they are priced out of, uh, 
the character's first appearance. Now, Nebula's first appearance is a little bit more affordable um, than Gamora's. Actually, significantly more affordable. So I think a lot of people will gravitate to this book, but end up picking up Nebula's first appearance. So if I had the choice between Gamora 1 and Nebula 1, which is another hot list book going for almost as much, I would definitely be picking the Gamora 1. But that's just me. I may be wrong about that. Um, so anyway, like I said, I was about to give up and this kind of reinvigorated me. So I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. And the very next box over from the G section had fantastic four in it. And you know, if you looked at the title, I said there was a gold mine. There really was a lot of books priced at three and four, four fifty, somewhere around that area. Um, that were definitely undervalued keys that have gone up significantly in the last year. So we're going to take a look at them. Um, first up was fantastic Four 208. This is not a book that has been on the hot list recently or anything like this, but it's the first appearance of the champions of Xandar. And the reason I picked it up was it was only $3. First of all, second, uh, Nova is one of the members of the champions of Xandar. So, there's a lot of speculation about Nova and the Nova core and all that stuff. So I think quite possibly um, we could see, you know, some connections to these different groups that Nova had been in. And um, so I picked up this book, like I said, $3, it wasn't too big of an investment. I wouldn't be like picking up like a hundred copies of this book. It's kind of a, you know, unlikely spec, but uh, it was still in there for cheap. So I got it. Uh, next up, we got uh, Fantastic Four 238. Now, this one definitely has a little bit more um, spec possibility to it. This is the first appearance of Aunt Petunia, which is not really the, the big part of this book. Uh, if, if you know Aunt Petunia, if you've read Fantastic Four, the thing references her a lot, but she isn't seen for, I, I think, decades, honestly, from the first time he references her until this book. Uh, this is the first book she appears in. Um, I, I don't think that is the key significance of this book as much as the fact that this is the origin story of Frankie Ray. Now, Frankie Ray becomes uh, Nova at one point. And um, like I said, Nova's got some spec for the MCU. There's a lot of different versions of Nova, but you know we got to kind of see which one comes out. I like picking up the spec books and... I've said this before a thousand times. Dr. Doom makes every cover better. Even though he's holding a sign here says, Honest Dr. Doom is not in this Marvel comic. It's like they knew that that was the case. They, you know, Marvel probably did. That putting Dr. Doom on a cover makes it sell more. Um, <laughs> good marketing strategy here with the, the funny sign as well. Uh, moving on now to Fantastic Four 252. Now, this is an interesting book for a couple reasons. One, as you can see... Ooh, wrong way as you can see it is a sideways cover and the actual the whole story is done sideways so you hold the book like this and flip it up rather than flipping from left to right but even more so than that there are tattoos in this book now if you're a comic collector you might recognize oh tattoos that immediately makes you think of amazing spider-man 238 Reason being is that is a huge Spider-Man key, the first appearance of Hobgoblin, um, and there are tattoos in that book as well. These tattoos are the same exact tattoos that are in that book. Now, what some people do, if they find a copy of ASM 238 with no tattoos, they take the tattoos out of this book and put them in there. Now, I personally would not do that unless I'm letting the buyer know that they are from this book or if I'm keeping it for my personal collection. That's just my personal opinion on it. That to me feels like restoration. You're adding something to the book that had been taken out. Um, you know, just like a staple, you know, if you add a staple and it's not the original staple, that is restoration. I consider that to be restoration. I would not do that personally. I actually found an ASM 238 just a week or two ago at a thrift store for $10. It did not have the tattoos in it. And I sold it as is incomplete without the tattoos. You will get a green label for that. Uh, same thing for this book. If you get this book graded, um, it gets a green label. If it doesn't have the tattoos, a qualified label, meaning that it's incomplete in some way. So 
you know, this book is, is sought after for that reason. It has the tattoos. And like I said, people like to replace the tattoos in ASM 238 with the tattoos in here if they find a copy that is uh, tattooless. That's about it for that book. We're going to move on to some MCU heavy hitters now. We got Fantastic Four 272. This book spiked like crazy this past year when Loki was the show that was premiering because... This book is the first cameo appearance of Nathaniel Richards, who is you know has the same name as Kang. Now, Nathaniel Richards, this one, is the father of Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four, but Nathaniel Richards Kang is a descendant of those two. Um, that's that's about it for that character. Um, you know, there are a bunch of different versions of Kang, all that stuff. And, uh, you know, we get into the multiverse of it, but people spec on this book cause it's the first appearance of, uh, in cameo of Nathaniel Richards. Now going along with that book, you usually find these two together and I did, and I was so stoked about it because they were four bucks a piece and these books are 20 to $30, um, each kind of the, the cameo is about 20 and this one is the first full appearance as well as the first cover appearance. We see him right there of Nathaniel Richards. Now this is a nice newsstand copy as well. And I am stoked about finding these two. I found them quite a few times for $5 or less over the past few years. I even found a, a two seventy two in a dollar bin was stoked about that. Um, but yeah, this is great MCU speculation, all that stuff, a connection to Kang, as well as a connection to the Fantastic Four. We definitely could see Nathaniel Richards pop in, you know, at some point once the Fantastic Four are introduced. More Loki stuff here. We had a lot of Fantastic Four books pop with uh, Loki coming out. We got 346, and this is a book I have not found in the wild. Um, I really looked for them a ton when... Loki was coming out because this is the first cameo appearance of the TVA, the Time Variance Authority. You, know, If you watch Loki, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They are the group being controlled by, uh, by Kang and, you know, keeping the sacred timeline in order, all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, first cameo appearance. It's a newsstand copy. Kind of a weird cover with this dinosaur here, but uh, it makes sense given they are, uh, you know, keeping a timeline and... You know, somewhere along the timeline, there were dinosaurs. Um, you know, that being said, like I said, this was not a book that I found at all after, um, you know, Loki's premiere. So uh, this actually, I think, might be the first time I've ever owned this book. Um, going right along with that, we got 252. This is the first cameo appearance of Mobius, who uh, Owen Wilson played in, in Loki. Great character. I think he did an awesome job. Brought you know, some great comic relief to that show, as well as really nailing the serious parts of, uh, of the show as well. Um, great, great performance. I really liked Loki personally, not as much as I liked WandaVision, but they both definitely got two thumbs up from me. Um, even better than this book, you might have caught this one in the beginning. We got 353, the very next issue, the first full appearance of Mobius. We got a newsstand. We got this amazing, fantastic, or uh, Human Torch cover. Great, great book. I'm probably going to hold on to this one as my personal copy. Actually, I got to check. I think I have one already. So I got to see which one's in better condition. And I'll probably get rid of whatever one is not in better condition. Um, again, a fantastic MCU-related book. From Loki, I, I couldn't believe that all of these were in there. I'm not sure if no one had looked in this box for a while. No one had thought about Fantastic Four stuff. But like I said, all the other keys were taken from the other um, the other titles. But uh, we got some more coming in here. We got Fantastic Four 358. This one was recently on the hot list. This is the first appearance of Pi Bok the Power Scroll. I think I've shown this in other videos. This book could have been found in dollar bins for a long time. Not now. There's a lot of speculation around this character, whether it's going to be a an appearance in the Fantastic Four movie or if it's going to be something with Secret Invasion. But uh, yeah, first appearance of Pybok, the Power Scroll. And this is a 
very 90s cover. It's a die cut cover, meaning that that four in the circle, it's actually cut out and the four is inside on the first page. Um, so always make sure that that, you know, when you're looking at this cover, it's around that circles in nice, good condition. I've seen ones that have like little rips and wears around where that uh, the four was cut out, where the hole was cut out. So always look out for that. Make sure you get a nice high grade copy of this book. Um, like I said, a hot list book and one that, you know, it, it went up a lot. It settled a little bit, but it seems to be holding pretty well in the 10 to $15 range. Now, I'm so glad I looked at the Fantastic Four books. I was about to give up. Like I said, that Gamora book might have saved me. I might have given up had I not found that one and never gotten to these. There are a couple more here. I've got Doctor Strange number 80. This is the first appearance of Rintra, who is a giant green minotaur, I believe with time traveling abilities, if I'm remembering correctly. And there is some speculation on this character for Multiverse of Madness. I don't think anything's confirmed yet, but I have a couple copies of this book, and I'll be holding on to uh, to this one probably as well to see if that you know pans out. And uh, next we got Alpha Flight 106. This was only three bucks, and that's really all I would pay for this book. But it does have some key significance uh, in this issue. North Star comes out as gay, and I is I believe the first you know openly gay ma major character or, you know medium level character in marvel comics um i i might be wrong about that there might have been one before but definitely a significant book as far as uh you know diversity and representation goes and um you know there's a lot of that going on now you know things are definitely getting more and more diverse but this book was really ahead of its time with that um, these last couple books, I was stoked to find them because I've been looking for daredevil stuff recently. You probably have seen my, 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 my pictures, my videos. I bought a daredevil one. I also got a couple copies of daredevil two. I just upgraded mine. Um, and I've been actually trying to complete the daredevil run. And I've also been getting Marvel Knights books because they have echo in them. We've already seen echo a little bit. A little, uh, a little uh, kind of cameo appearance in, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Hawkeye, the show Hawkeye so far. Um, I think she's going to be a more major character in the Hawkeye show. And then she's getting her own spinoff. Will we see Daredevil in that? I'm hoping. I'm hoping that might be our first view of Daredevil in the MCU. But um, who knows? Anyway, um, the Marvel Knight series has, first of all, has fantastic covers her first appearance is nine and ten those books are pretty pricey luckily i secured some um just recently actually but this is number 53 it's got a cover appearance this is selling for about ten dollars right now even though it's not really a key issue at least i don't think it's a key issue um going along with that this one i just picked up because i love the cover and i did not have the book yet i don't think it's really selling for more than like five or ten dollars but an awesome wolverine cover Amazing character, beloved character um, in this Daredevil Marvel Knights run. And this last one here, again, is Echo on the cover. People are picking these up like crazy. You know, whether you can't afford nine, uh, 9 and 10, the first two appearances of this character, or you just like the character, a lot of people are picking up these cover appearances in the the 50s. Um, that's really a, a lot of the books in the, in the Marvel Knights, the, the 50s, I think... Uh, she was brought back. I don't know. I haven't read this run, and I really want to. Um, definitely very interested in both the characters of Daredevil and Echo. Um, yeah, the awesome, awesome cover work as well. This whole haul, I paid, like I said, three, three fifty, four, four fifty for every book. Not not a penny over four fifty for a book. It came out to about, I think it was seventy one dollars for the sixteen books. So that's a little over four dollars a book, and I added up the values of kind of what they're they're going for market wise, and it's a little over two hundred dollars. So I kind of tripled my money there. Um, you know, uh, if I do sell, I'm probably going to sell some of this, but a lot of it is for my personal collection. But uh, even if I were to sell part of it just to recoup that $71 I spent or maybe a little bit more than that, just so I have a little bit of a profit on this haul. Um, either way, that's great. These were 
undervalued books. And some of them, like I said, have more room to grow as uh, as we unfold the next chapter of the MCU Phase 5. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this haul, these great books. And, um, you know, leave a comment below. Hit that like button. Uh, that'll give you one entry for the, uh, the giveaway. And uh, make sure you check back for the, uh, the collection review of the collection that I bought while I was also out on this day. That one's got some really cool books in it as well. Like I said, I'm going to put the link down below once I have that video out, probably next week sometime, later next week. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, I appreciate your support and everything. And uh, let's get to 1,000 subscribers. We're well on our way there. And uh, yeah, until next time, turn the page, wash your hands.